What if Anakin Skywalker went with Ahsoka on the Siege of Mandalore? I did something similar to this a while back, but I really, after seeing these two kind of at the Siege of Mandalore in Ahsoka Episode 5, I wanted to explore the path with just the two of them, so hope you guys enjoy. It goes down a different road than the similar one last time, but yeah, I really actually do like this one a lot. All right, some people really say my intros are too long, so we're gonna, we're gonna speed it up. Let's get right into this video. Anakin and Obi-Wan stood at a data table with Ahsoka and Bo-Katan. The two Jedi, heroes of the Clone Wars, were deciding on their next move. Just moments ago, Bo-Katan had asked for help in a siege of Mandalore. The planet was under the rule of former Sith Lord Darth Maul. For Obi-Wan, this was personal. Deep down, he hated Maul for killing Qui-Gon and Satine, and all of his Jedi training taught him to first ask the Council, and second, not to act on personal feelings such as hatred. So he left to contact the Jedi Council. And for a moment, Anakin and Ahsoka stood together. Anakin said he wanted to help, but there were long-standing treaties keeping the Republic from aiding Mandalorian wars. The two former Master and Apprentice stood together, and eventually Anakin excused himself so he had time to think. Anakin went to his private quarters on the cruiser, so he could contact the one person that he trusted above the rest, Padme. Anakin set up the comlink, and soon enough a hologram of Padme Amidala showed up. Padme could tell that Anakin was stressed. Clearly something was weighing him down, and Anakin told Padme about the entire situation, how Ahsoka was back and asking for his help, and how he now had to decide between the Jedi Code, Jedi Council, or choose Ahsoka his Padawan, someone that was always like a younger sister to him. Padme smiled at Anakin and asked what he would do if it was Padme that needed help. Anakin said that she already knew the answer to that. Then Padme replied again, saying this is what made Anakin special. This is what made Anakin the only Jedi she could ever truly love. That deep down, beneath the rigid Jedi code, he had a strong heart. A heart that could sometimes get him in trouble, but a heart that made people love him, and she told Anakin to trust his instincts. Anakin remembered Qui-Gon saying this same thing. What would Qui-Gon do? And Anakin knew now, he must trust his instincts, help Ahsoka. He said goodbye to Padme, and set off to ready his men for a new mission, to Mandalore. After some time, Anakin had readied his troops for a hyperspace jump to Mandalore, they would swiftly take the planet and bring Maul to justice. For Ahsoka, this all made her happy. This was the Anakin she knew, and it was so wonderful to see the clones again. Rex and the 501st were forever going to be a part of her, and they'd painted their helmets orange to show their respect for her. Obi-Wan realized what was going on at the last moment, and he caught Anakin just in time as he was boarding the ship for a hyperspace jump. Obi-Wan could only sigh to himself. Deep down, he knew this was going to happen, and he decided there was no way of stopping it. He locked eyes with Anakin, his old student, the nine-year-old boy from Tatooine, now the greatest warrior of the Clone Wars. Anakin yelled down to Obi-Wan with his usual sarcastic, sassy nature, saying that he made sure to leave half of the 501st here with Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan simply smiled and said, Goodbye, old friend, and may the Force be with you. The hatch closed, and the last thing Anakin heard before the jump was alarms beginning to blare inside the cruiser. Before Anakin could find out what happened, he was in hyperspace. No going back now. Still on the cruiser, Obi-Wan was called to an emergency council meeting amidst the alarms blaring. He appeared as a hologram in the council chambers as Yoda began explaining what was going on. Coruscant was attacked. Chancellor Palpatine was captured by the droid General Grievous. Yoda and Windu had tried to stop him, but the attack was so sudden. Coruscant was in danger. It needed help. Yoda turned now to Obi-Wan, saying he and Anakin must report back to Coruscant immediately. Anakin's flying ability may be a last hope for rescuing Palpatine. Obi-Wan hesitated, clearly not wanting to admit something, and Windu spoke up, asking if Anakin had gone to Mandalore. The usual disapproving look was on Windu's face whenever he talked about Anakin. Obi-Wan sighed and said yes, Anakin did go with Ahsoka. Yoda was disappointed, but there was no time for Anakin to come back. 
So Yoda assigned Obi-Wan to come back himself, and together he would meet up with Master Seizi Tin, rescue the Chancellor. Everyone agreed, and soon the call was ended. On the way to Mandalore, Anakin got a new transmission from Obi-Wan, where he described what was happening on Coruscant. The planet was under attack. Palpatine was captured. The fear that Anakin kept hidden inside of him began to rise, and he felt terrible thinking about Palpatine and Padme still on Coruscant. He should be there, but he couldn't. Mandalore was his mission. He would never get to Coruscant in time. He had to put his focus on the here and the now. He wished Obi-Wan good luck, and emerged from hyperspace above Mandalore. He descended in a transport with Bo, Ahsoka, Rex, and some other clones. And once in the foggy atmosphere, he smiled at Ahsoka, saying that he would race her to the surface. It was just like old times. Rex laughed as Anakin dove out of the transport, lightsaber ignited, and Ahsoka followed close behind. The two of them jumped from ship to ship, cutting down enemy Mandalorians in the air, racing down together. Ahsoka was happy to be back with Anakin, and Anakin was happy to distract himself from Coruscant with Ahsoka. They landed at about the exact same time, and sent a force push at the Mandalorians ahead of them, knocking them down as Rex, Bo, and the rest came in, storming the place. Together, Anakin and Ahsoka decided on their next moves. Obi-Wan Kenobi emerged from hyperspace above Coruscant, meeting Master Seizi Tin in the air. Seizi was no Anakin, but he was still the second best starfighter pilot in the Jedi Order. The two of them flew through Coruscant space, heading straight for the ship carrying Grievous, Dooku, and Palpatine. And on that ship, Palpatine, aka Darth Sidious, sat in his chair with Count Dooku. Palpatine opened himself to the Force, feeling for Anakin, but quickly realized that he was not here. Somehow, Anakin was not coming to rescue him. That was the most important part of this secret plan. Anakin was going to tap into the dark side, kill Dooku. Palpatine had adjusted before, and he would again today. He was a master manipulator. It was perhaps his greatest power. He'd manipulated his old master into death. Then the Trade Federation, Naboo, and eventually an entire war under his control, all while manipulating Anakin. It would continue elsewhere. He told Dooku to engage the hyperdrive and take off. There was no point in staying here. And they needed a planet deep in the dark side, Mustafar. They would go to Mustafar. And so Dooku began preparations for the jump. Anakin would come to them, eventually. As Obi-Wan and Seizi flew through space, they realized the ship carrying Palpatine was set to jump to hyperspace. They had little time, but they were close. And as they got closer, Seizi took out the shields, and doors to the hangar quickly began to shut. Obi-Wan and Seizi went as fast as they could towards the hangar. The ship's hyperdrive was engaged. It was about to jump to hyperspace. The next few seconds would go by like this for Obi-Wan Kenobi. The hangar doors had just enough room for one starfighter. He snuck in just as the ship was blasting into hyperspace, but his own starfighter was clipped. Seizi did not make it. The Jedi Master slammed into the hangar door. Obi-Wan watched Seizi's ship burst into a million pieces with him inside, as the ship and Obi-Wan was clipped slightly by the hangar door, sending him spiraling into the hangar. He slammed his head into the front of the starfighter as everything went dark, as the invisible hand jumped into hyperspace with Dooku, Palpatine, and Grievous aboard it. Back on Mandalore, Anakin and Ahsoka were about to enter the Mandalorian Palace to find and control the Prime Minister, they needed him to be arrested. They were with Bo-Katan, Rex, and a squad of about 10 501st clones. As they got to the door to the palace, it opened itself to slowly reveal a hooded man, Maul. And in the streets away from the door, a squad of Mandalorians loyal to Maul began fighting with a different squad of 501st troopers. Anakin looked to Rex, Bo, and the rest, and he said that he and Ahsoka would handle this. Rex responded, saying they'll take the long way, and led his men into battle with the Mandalorians. Maul removed his hood without saying a word, and ignited both sides of his lightsaber. Anakin and Ahsoka did the same, getting into their own battle stances. After a moment of sizing up their opponent, Ahsoka flipped over Maul, her strike from above blocked, 
and the battle was fully in motion. Anakin and Ahsoka swung together, striking at Maul from the legs and the head. But Maul was acrobatic, athletic. He'd prepared for this fight, fully anticipating Anakin and Kenobi. But the Padawan would do fine. Maul only truly cared about one thing here, killing Anakin Skywalker, so Darth Sidious could not have him. Sidious wanted Anakin, and Maul had visions of Sidious, Anakin, Order 66, he would not let his master have Skywalker, his old master, and he hated his old master, but he could not kill him himself. So this was the next best thing, killing his prized future apprentice. And Maul had set up traps in this building, explosives, to help even the odds. He alone was no match for Skywalker and Ahsoka, but with his own help, with his own traps, he may have a chance. And as Maul was back to a new door, he swung around athletically in the air at a blinding speed, kicking Ahsoka in the face, knocking her to the ground. Anakin had an angry look in his eye now as he pushed forward with extreme strength. Maul kept him at bay as he grabbed one of his explosives on the ground, sending it flying at Ahsoka. The last thing Anakin saw was her put her hands up as the explosion broke a hole in the wall. Ahsoka was gone. Maul had just made a grave mistake. Maul could sense the shift in Anakin. It was as if a dragon had been unleashed from inside of him. Anakin sprinted at Maul, anger showing on his face, swinging at every angle. Maul backed up as fast as he could, trying to hold off Anakin. Maul ducked under a swing, then saw an opening and swung at Anakin's back. But Anakin blocked the strike from behind him, then spun and cut Maul's lightsaber in half with astounding speed. Maul looked down to his sabers as they fizzled out and felt his throat begin to tighten as he was lifted into the air. Maul understood now why Sidious wanted Anakin so desperately. This power, this emotion. It was meant to serve the Sith. Maul could feel his vision begin to go dark. Anakin was killing him. But from the hallway, a voice called to Anakin, telling him to stop. It was Ahsoka. One side of her face badly burned, and she was missing a hand. When the explosive hit her, she had created a force shield in time to survive. But it cost her greatly. Ahsoka fell to her knees now, coughing, begging Anakin to stop, to choose the light. Anakin let go, and put force restraining cuffs on Maul's hands. He helped Ahsoka up, laying her against the wall. And soon, Rex called down to Anakin, saying the Prime Minister has been arrested. Mandalore will be back in its rightful hands soon. Anakin thanked Rex, then ignited his lightsaber to Maul's throat. Anakin told Maul it was over, and to give him a reason not to kill him right now. Maul hesitated, but he felt the power inside Anakin. Perhaps he could be kept in the light. Perhaps he could defeat Sidious after all. And Maul smiled, saying only he knew who the Sith Lord was, and if he was kept alive, he would tell Anakin right now. On Mustafar, Obi-Wan Kenobi woke up in a similar situation to the start of the Clone Wars. He was trapped in a sort of ray shield cell, floating and stuck, alone in this room. And outside the room, he didn't know, but Darth Sidious was speaking with Count Dooku. They must lure Anakin here. He will come to them, feel the darkness of this planet, watch his friend Obi-Wan die, and then he will forever be a part of the Sith. Sidious always adjusted. He would always win, and this was no different. He set his new plan into motion. Grabbing Obi-Wan's comlink, he prepared to call Anakin Skywalker for help. But on Mandalore, Anakin could barely stand up any longer. Maul had just revealed a terrible truth, an unimaginable truth, but one that deep down, Anakin knew to be the truth. Chancellor Palpatine was the Sith Lord, he was Darth Sidious, and he wanted Anakin as his student. Anakin remembered everything, how this was perfectly set up. His childhood meetings with Palpatine, the countless times Palpatine encouraged Anakin to use his emotions, Anakin being thrown into the worst battles of the war to drive his hatred for the Jedi and the Republic, the countless attempts on Padme's life. Anakin was broken from this betrayal that he could barely hear Ahsoka calling his name. 
Anakin broke out of this mind fog he was in to see Ahsoka handing him his comlink. Obi-Wan was calling. Anakin grabbed the comlink, but it was not Obi-Wan. Instead, the voice came from Palpatine. Anakin felt his anger rise as Palpatine began to speak, saying he managed to escape for a moment and found Obi-Wan's comlink. Both he and Obi-Wan were being kept prisoner on Mustafar and needed Anakin's help. Anakin could not say anything. He hated Palpatine, and Palpatine sensed some turmoil within Anakin, asking what was wrong. Anakin realized he could use this information, so soon he replied, saying that he was alright, but almost lost Ahsoka, so he may seem a bit distraught. Then, Anakin said he would be on his way to Mustafar shortly. Anakin ended the call and put himself in the Force, trying desperately to calm himself, meditating, at least trying to meditate, searching for answers. And eventually, a familiar voice came to him now. Qui-Gon? The voice told Anakin that this is the moment he was made for. He must choose to live in the light or die in the dark. Anakin opened his eyes. He had to rescue Obi-Wan and destroy the Sith. Let go of these feelings. Go do what is right. And this was a mission for him and Ahsoka alone. It had to be discreet. He needed Palpatine to trust him. Anakin sent the imprisoned Maul back to Coruscant with Rex and the 501st and he told Rex everything, so then Rex could tell the Jedi Council everything. By the time the Council finds out what Anakin is doing, they will be too late to stop him. He was the Chosen One. Time to prove it. Time to end the Sith. Anakin and Ahsoka flew through hyperspace to Mustafar. During the flight, Ahsoka spent time in a Bacta tank with a medical droid getting a replacement hand for her. She would not be at all used to it for months, but it would still help and eventually the two of them arrived above Mustafar. The plan was simple. Well, it was an Anakin Skywalker plan, so simple might be the wrong word. But together, they flew down to the communications facility where Obi-Wan was being held. Palpatine was sitting in his restraint chair as he watched Anakin enter the room alone. This was good. Very soon, Skywalker would be his. His and Dooku's plan would be enacted here and now. Dooku greeted Anakin at the door, igniting his red lightsaber. Anakin ignited his blue saber and told Dooku this would be their final meeting. Anakin swung at Dooku and the two engaged in a fierce lightsaber duel. This was exactly the distraction that Anakin had to create. While the Sith Lords in the other room were focused on Anakin, Ahsoka crawled through the vents until she found the room that Obi-Wan was located in. And next to him in the room, of course, was General Grievous. The lightsabers from Anakin and Dooku could be heard from in this room, and Ahsoka could also hear Obi-Wan sarcastically talking to Grievous. This was just another day in the life for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Eventually, Obi-Wan sensed Ahsoka in the vents, and he caused his own distraction. He asked General Grievous why his data table was showing a Republic fleet showing up above. This, of course, was a lie, but as Grievous walked towards the table, Ahsoka used the opportunity to cut down from the vent and free Obi-Wan, handing him one of her lightsabers. Obi-Wan looked at Ahsoka and said, Took you long enough, and I like the new hand, before the two of them took Grievous completely by surprise. Before long, the general was nothing but spare parts. In the other room, Dooku was taking on Anakin, and he had the Jedi backing up now. Eventually, Dooku kicked Anakin to the ground. In this moment, he decided to enact the plan. Kenobi would die, and Anakin would give in to his anger. Dooku called out to Grievous to open the door and kill the prisoner. But when the door opened, there was no Grievous. Instead, Kenobi and Ahsoka stood smiling at Dooku. Fear ran down Dooku's spine, and he looked back down to Anakin. But he was gone, and from behind, Dooku could hear a shocked, angry scream. A blue blade protruded from behind Sidious's chair, through his spine, and out of the Sith Lord's heart. Dooku saw Anakin standing there as he pulled the lightsaber away. Sidious died as Anakin moved to the front, telling the Dark Lord he lost. He failed. He was outsmarted. Dooku stood facing all three of the Jedi now and a battle droid alerted him that five Republic cruisers just emerged from hyperspace. 
Perfect timing, thought Anakin. Rex had told the Council, and now the Republic was here with the entire Jedi Council. Obi-Wan told Dooku that now is the time people in his position would typically surrender. And together, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka, the trio of heroes from the Clone Wars, walked a handcuffed Dooku out onto the landing platform of Mustafar. Waiting for them was Yoda, Windu, Plo Koon, and the rest of the Council with Rex and the 501st there as well. The Republic and the Jedi Order had won. From here, over the next few years, peace would slowly be restored to the Republic. Chancellor Bail Organa would help officially end this war with a testimony from Maul about Sidious being Palpatine. For this, he got life in prison instead of a death sentence. Bail would help clones transition to new lives or stay as security personnel. The Jedi Order would spread out to many new temples on Tython, Octu, Lothal, and others. Anakin would leave the Jedi Order, and Padme would take much time off from the Senate as they raised their children with common visits from Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and other friends that they made throughout their lives. And folks, that's where our story ends today. What'd you think about it? I really wanted to do something like this after seeing Anakin and Ahsoka together at the Siege of Mandalore in the Ahsoka show. Beautiful episode, beautiful show, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's fan fiction. Please leave a like, it helps so much, so if you enjoyed, leaving a like is just the great way to support. I would really appreciate it. So yeah, thanks a ton, and let me know what you thought. I'll see you in the next video.